Sunday Paper Podcast with Greg and Mike. Reading Sunday papers is something I don't like. So I grab my telephone and cue up the show. I listen to my news on the radio. Sunday Paper Podcast with Greg and Mike. Read all about it. Read all about it. Greg Fitzsimmons has a brand new recorder. I think it's going to sound oh, a lot it sounds richer. So I'm going to sound good. less like a female. It sound is that what you got the version that makes you a man? Yeah, it's the you got Zoom. Yet an, you got yet another uh, mechanism, a machine that that helps you be a man. It's a Zoom transition, they call it, and um, it's like it's like a an audio gay conversion therapy, except it flips flips you to straight. I like it. Well, yeah. that's what the, that's what a lot of the therapy, the conversion therapy is for. Oh, look at my light in the background here. All right. Oh, no, you're looking good, Mike. Your little hair is all tight on the sides. It is tight on the sides. It's ridiculous. Very um, 1950s. Coming out of Florida. I was down in Florida this week. Tell us all about it. The old man had two of these heart procedures, which were related, but one one day after the other. They all went very well, and it's always a scene down there. Uh, Did your I, sister go down as well? She was down there as well. She's still there, actually, helping him like, with the apartment and stuff. And then uh, there's this really great place uh, called the Church Mouse, which is a thrift store, and everyone there like i got this guy's shirt and I, his monograms on it but you get the highest and waspiest clothing ah. and it's dirt cheap <laughs> like i got this amazing golf shirt for 11 bucks or whatever but a lot of people when they pass away and then my my stepmother we gave a lot of her stuff to the church mouse also so what happened is you these people see their friends stuff in there which which must be disconcerting uh. Oh my god yeah but i'm in there and i love it because i like palm beach is and i'm not talking about west palm i'm talking about the island palm beach is so over the top that i feel like i'm wearing a costume when i'm down there i, I don't wear yellow except when i'm there and like and like pink shirts so i'm in there and I'm going through shirts and I'm like, this is really fun. Not only are these amazing Brooks Brothers and everything else, like, you know, and like like crocodile leather belts and all this stuff. Not only are they dirt cheap and all this, but it's like fun because it's almost like you're, dre you're dressing. It's like a masquerade down there. <laughs> and uh, it occurred and to me. And do you leave like, the clothes down there? Yeah. And I leave yeah. them down there. And it occurs to me. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to buy like regular, you know, leave them. So it occurs to me. Oh, it's fun. In a way, like at dinner one night, I'm like, I wonder what the guy's name is. Like the thing said like CF or something like that. And I'm like, oh, it's kind of like fun wearing uh, dead men's <laughs> dead men's clothing <laughs> down here. It's like, a, and then I realized uh, I'm not that far away <laughs> from wearing my dad's clothing down there. And then it got a lot less fun. <laughs> got a lot less fun when I, when I put those two things together that yeah. was right in front of my face. You reach in the inside pocket of the jacket. There's just blue chew and yeah. baby aspirin. I'm going to be shopping in there. I'm like, hey, look at this. These are my initials too. Uh, it turns out I'm Mike <laughs> Jr. That's why. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you buy a gift for somebody, they die. You can buy it back at the thrift store, give it to the next guy, wait for him to die. I always had my eye on Sally's hat. <laughs> <laughs> But it's crazy. Oh, a little gossip from down there. We can't say names. You've been to the compound, the place I'm talking about. Uh, you came for Easter service. To yeah, that of course. Unbelievable place. All right. So that guy died a few years ago. And he has multiple children, three, I think. And there's grandchildren as well. And then he, you know was a bit of a player, right? I, I, if, did you ever get told stories about him? Yes. He was very active uh, with women and stuff, and uh, even in, in when he was very old. And he, he wasn't married. And he started dating a woman. Now, this woman has just killed it, mar marrying, I think she's had two husbands. Uh, although this guy, I, the one we know who died, he was at, he, I think dated her first, maybe anyway, 
she's done incredibly well. She has house. She has a house on Pebble Beach. She has a house. Uh, I think she has a house on an island off, you know, in the Bahamas, New York, like it, unbelievably wealthy. Anyway, her husband dies. The guy we know starts dating her. Nice. This, by the way, this is a very typical Palm Beach story. So, except they're about their age appropriate. That's the only thing. Normally, the woman is like 35 years younger. So, she's old as well. And so, they start dating. And then, he passes away. And she claims that... Uh, that she can stay in the house and she's going to like let his kids and all his family like visit or she'll be in, maybe she'll move to the guest house, which is the one near the pool, which is like, like big, bigger than most homes down there. Long story short, she just, a judge just decided the house is hers and the kids are never allowed to visit. No. And she did, by the way, they're not married. And she did it by coughing up emails set where he like promised that to her one though, the kids were under the impression it was like, well, she could live there till she passes or whatever. But just to let you know, like how big a deal this is, this was like when the judge had the verdict, it's like that day you go home and you're like, um, Oh, we lost the $40 million. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 40 million wow. dollar swing uh, that that's the difference that happened uh, with a judge's opinion on this damn and that's not a will you would think that there would be a will that would be binding over emails not only that i told my dad i go the, this would have been my defense if i was his son and i met his son my defense would have been your honor i am going to prove to the court today like very with tons of evidence my dad was a an incredibly well-known and famous liar and whatever he wrote to her in the email, I'll show you what he's written to other people. <laughs> they had yeah. their, they had their houseboy. I think he might've been even Filipino. They had a houseboy. His job was to change the wardrobes and closets of the different women he was seeing. Like when they would come, fly, when he would fly them down on the private jet and all that, like he was a player. Yeah, you had me at Filipino houseboy. I mean, that's <laughs> that's a whole other level. He would set up Christmas. Uh, he'd set up everything because, you know, Laura went to stay with him out in the Hamptons. Also, they have a gigantic house in the Hamptons. He grew up dirt poor, though. That's <laughs> oh why uh, my dad and he were friends. Like, that's the whole amazing. Growing yeah. up dirt poor guy. I mean, uh, the, he, I wonder how Florida treats widows, female widows versus male widows. Like I know with California, as you know, better than anybody, it's a tough place to get divorced as a, as a, as the, as the main bread earner, whether it's yes. male or female. Right. Um, but I wonder if Florida, since it's such an entrenched kind of patriarchal society down there, if it isn't like better, if it doesn't skew better for men, I wonder, but I do hear of a lot of cases where the, the, the new wife is younger than the children Yeah, and she gets all the stuff. I, I do know because of my dad and, uh, I do know that it's like, it might be like one third. I don't know what it is, but if you pass away, there's a rule protecting spouses. The minimum you can give, I think is a third or something like that. Yeah, because uh, you would think like Florida, in, in the same way that like Delaware has credit card companies because they have really favorable tax write-offs for the credit. Like you ever notice that? Like your your Visa card, the home yeah. address is Delaware. Like I wonder if like North Dakota set up a, a, a system where men get to keep all their money and cut their wives out. If men would set up residency in North Dakota, come on, honey, pack your shit. We got to spend six months of the year in North Dakota. <laughs> it's lovely up there about three weeks a year. You, yeah. You'll love it. It's great. You ever been to North Dakota? I drove all the way through South Dakota. I don't think with wall drug, isn't that in South Dakota? And, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah, uh, I spent a lot of time doing college shows in Minnesota, North Dakota, Iowa. It was wow. fucking brutal. It's just amazing when you look into these people's eyes and there's, they're just vacant stares. They're, they, you live in North Dakota. Here's what you know. 
there's nuclear rockets underneath your ground. So if the Russians do attack this country, you think you're safe in North Dakota? You're the first place that's getting nuked. God, it's so close to Winnipeg. I just called up a map. Yeah. Although Montana has such a good name, and there it is right there. So uh, Sunday, in two days, well, actually the day this comes out, uh, yeah. I will be taking my lovely bride to Las Vegas to see the Dead and Company at the Sphere. Oh, man. And uh, hold on to your hats. What, what, uh, what drugs are you taking? Mushrooms and marijuana edibles. <laughs> Have you seen the images? Unbelievable. <laughs> Have you seen the Cornell one? No. Uh, apparently in 77, it's, it's, it's legendarily one of their best shows. The sphere became the, the, the stage, the place, the venue at Cornell. And it, it's like, you know, it's, it's a long roof. It almost looks like a barn. Uh, and the sphere became this place in Cornell. You mean this place became the sphere? No, the sphere, you're in the sphere, all of a sudden transformed into the theater in Cornell. Oh, no shit. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and I then, can't and wait. And then Haight-Ashbury, the hate, you know, the hate popped up, all the buildings, all the, yeah. all the homes and everything. Yeah, the best is uh, the cost of this trip because our, our good friend Dan Brickner, who I just love, most generous guy, he had two tickets to go and somehow he wasn't using them. He offered them to us and then you couldn't make it. So uh, You're Brick welcome, Aaron. So I'm bringing the wife. I look at yeah. the seats. He sends me the seats. He got them on game time. Easy transfer from game time. Nice. And uh, they're like amazing seats. They're right. You want to be in the center. You don't want to be down front. Right. So they're like dead center. And I got uh, frequent flyer points for the hotel and the air and the air fl flights. And uh, yeah, it's going to be great. Dead center. Uh, that's fantastic. Where are you? Where are you staying? Um, I think at the Fount Fountain Blue, Fountain Blue. Oh, all right. Yeah. Laura, Laura was at. Uh, I think they stayed. Laura George and De they stayed at the Cosmopolitan. Maybe they said it was too far. It was like just too far of a walk or whatever. I guess no. Venetian this is like a fifteen-minute walk. Like yeah, yeah. It's like fifteen, even twenty minutes. You know, it's going to be perfect. Perfect. They don't check any. They they thought they had maybe heard that they were going to be strict. So George didn't bring any uh, weed or any of that stuff there. Like, you know, he, he front loaded, but uh, the other people he went with didn't. And they were very bummed. And there was like no check. Like Laura thought it would be like the clear bag thing and all that. Yeah. Nothing. You just waltz right in. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I haven't been to a dead show. So I guess since uh, Halloween when we went uh, a couple years ago at the Hollywood Bowl. That was amazing. Yeah. And uh, John Mayer is still playing with them. And, uh, you know, I, I like it cause the crowds are like the old, old people still dancing. And then you see kids that are like our kids age loving it. It's just a fucking, it brings everybody together. I, except one thing that would have bummed me out. I saw someone posted, Oh, it was fun dancing next to Andy all night at the dead show. <clears throat> and it was that douchebag from, uh, Bravo. Uh, Oh who, yeah who has a bromance with John Mayer, I guess, but Andy, whatever his name is, uh, I, he's Cohen. just, he's a, I hate the, I, from what I know, I hate the guy. I can't stand the guy and I don't know anything about him. He's, he's there just, in a tie dye t-shirt dancing. No, it's like, yeah, Oh my God, yeah. get away from me. Right. Right. No, we're not wearing tie dye. That's a, that's an absolute, there's no tie dye on us. You should go in a tuxedo and a wedding dress and yes. uh, people will buy you drinks all weekend. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what else? What's going on with your kids? Uh, oh, yeah. Sophie's birthday is today. 21? Mm, Sunday. 21. Wow. So, uh, yeah. So we're recording this on Thursday uh, and Friday. But is today Friday? Today's yes. Friday. Um and what I did is I was trying to find her. I go, she's met a lot of really, she's in Amsterdam for her semester abroad and she's met a lot of really interesting people. And, uh, I 
looked for a houseboat to rent them so she could like throw a dinner or a party before she left because she comes back the following week. And uh, anyway, rented this apartment. So here's the thing. I rented on Airbnb and I tell them, hey, me and the wife are coming in and my daughter is there and she and her friend is going to stay. So the max you can have in this place is four. She's having six friends over for dinner. I'm not going. And so we're, but I thought it was like automatic entry, like an electronic thing. But now the guy who owns it is meeting me there <laughs> oh. uh, at, at like two o'clock on Sunday today. Wait, maximum people is four? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. It's not a great it's, reservation. It's a nice apartment. And I think, and it's a two bedroom and I think they don't want it used for yeah. exactly what it's going to be used for. Right. And so, uh, anyway, uh, she's going to go there. I think the plan is, I haven't told her this and be like, Oh, my uh, parents are in New York. They were late. So they're trying to get on this next flight. Cause that would be probably seven hours from t that means we would get there at like nine o'clock at night or something. All right. And what drugs yeah. are you going to take? What drugs am I going to take while I'm in Los Angeles lying about my existence in Amsterdam? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wasn't Actually, following. Oh, okay. I got it. I got it. Yeah, I didn't yeah, follow yeah. the story. No, I made it a little longer than it needed to be. Yeah. Actually, right. I'll, I think I'll be here. So wait, uh, are you in LA on Monday? Because we're having a party Monday night. No, I come back. Tuesday morning, really okay. early. Because Tom, Tom got his uh, rectum fixed, or his uh, prostate. prostate. Well, that was very serious, and he had to get multiple opinions. I don't want to talk about the. He loves talking about the details. I do not yeah. want to talk about those. They're gorier than his book Chaos about the Manson murders. By the way, if you're a Tom O'Neill fan, apparently he did an amazing interview with uh, who's the music producer? Rick Rubin. Rick Rubin. Have you listened to it yet? Yeah, well, here's the thing. So I met him. I was on my way home from working on the roast, and it was like late. And not that late, but like late to be coming home from work. It was like nine or something. And he's like, hey, we're out. I'm like, oh, I could actually stop if it's near the 10 and grab a beer. So I stopped. He had been up there all afternoon. So I go in and I see Tom, and Tom looks 100% homeless. He's coughing his brains out <laughs> nonstop. And also talk, like, uh, like you think my voice is bad. He, it's the worst sounding thing ever with, with a cough that doesn't stop. And he's missing half his teeth. Yeah. That's how he we went up to Rick Rubin's after the podcast, which is I think three hours, Rick Rubin goes, I've already told my editor to start cutting out as many coughs as we can. <laughs> And then Tom brought up to Rick Rubin. He goes, Rick Rubin got up to go to the bathroom like twice or three times or something during it. And Tom goes, oh, you know, maybe you should see my guy. I guess they started the podcast a little later because Tom had a doctor appointment before it. He goes, that's what I'm, uh, my doctor is about. A pro and anyway, he shared this stuff and Rick Rubin just stared at him. <laughs> Really? Yeah, like didn't say anything back. He's like, oh, you should, uh, Rick, it seems you have a uh, similar problem to me. The doctor I saw was a prostate doctor. You should go to him. And Rick just didn't respond. Yes, that's all. that all got cut out. That's not in the yeah. interview, I bet. Right. Well, it probably, I think it was off the interview. I think it was when Ruben came back in and oh, sat okay. down, like yeah. type thing. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, happy. But, but, I, it was, I, but it was at Shangri-La. You know, where they shot those scenes for the last waltz where they were playing pool. Oh, no and shit. At the, and at the record. Yeah, I mean, it's a legendary wow. Neil Young, Bob Dylan, uh, you know, the Shangri-La Studios. That's Rick Rubin now. And it's now so it's with cool. Rick Rubin. It used to be this home. You can read about it on Wikipedia. It has its own entry and it's very cool history and everything. And it was this like crunchy hippie home. And now Rick Rubin has it and it looks like, you know, heaven. It's all white minimal yeah. hardly any furniture you go there yeah. to find your voice and of course my favorite one of my favorite episodes of dave the tv show was called rick rubin and it was about him going to shangri-la to find out his what his voice oh, is, is that where they shot be. that episode 
Well, they didn't shoot at Shangri-La. I actually know where they shot it. They shot it at a place Sinatra used to go to in Calabasas. And between two ferns, we shot up there. It's famous. It's it's its only house on this hill. There's a guest house by the pool, and that's where everyone says that JFK and Marilyn would hook up there sometimes. Wow. Yeah. Well, listen. Uh, happy Memorial Day. It's not happy. Uh, I. How do you. How do you uh, commemorate mentioning Memorial Day? Do you say. Uh, do you just I say think- it's it's Memorial Day? I think you put a lot of cars on for sale and everything. No, you say Happy Memorial Day. But you're talking about Happy Good Friday. It's it's people that gave their lives. Their lives were they didn't give their lives. Their lives were taken. Uh, no, they gave them. That was in the that them. was the fine print. Yeah, yeah. So uh, all uh, so much respect for the people. In the military, who this is the thing that always strikes me is like you and your wife, you're in your 20s, you have a baby, and now you get sent to fucking Afghanistan for a year. You miss a year of your baby's life or your five year old's life, and then you got to go back for another year. Uh, and you know, and they're doing this for their country, and they could yeah. die. And you know, when I think about the fact that there are homeless veterans on any streets in this country, I get furious. It Same. is these people should be so well set up for the rest of their lives, especially if you were separated from your family for a period of time. I mean, there's some people like you know went into the military, like my nephew went in. And, uh, you know, he was stationed stateside. He was treated really well. He didn't work hard. And now he's got, like, he, he's, he got his pectoral muscle got torn while he was in service. He gets a check for, like, 2500 bucks a month just for that. On top of, they're paying for college, Columbia University, full ride, plus $5,000 a month in spending money while he's going to college for free. Then wow. he gets medical benefits for I mean they set they set people up but they're not really taking care of people that have serious mental issues that I was need gonna to say, be this dealt story with. took a turn it sounded very pro uh, veteran for now, a little bit I'm just saying they the money <laughs> is there I don't know that they're using it in the best possible way for the right people well listen there can be different tiers it's kind of like retiring how long have you been with the company how yeah. long have you uh, like your pension you know yeah. like you don't get the same pension if you've been there half the time of someone else but you're you're right about that. Uh, you know, I was here. I'm in Nashville, and I was and I went to I was at this like party at another house. Anyway, big bookshelves, and I'm looking at the books, and then I see this old leather like case, and I open up, and it's a Purple Heart. Wow. Yeah, and I have to say, man, that had some gravity to it. I was like, whoa, mm. and uh, so I stole it. <laughs> <laughs> so funny if you stood up and you were wearing it on your shirt <laughs> uh, speaking- yeah, but I told you I like wearing dead guy stuff <laughs> <laughs> or wounded in this case speaking of Memorial Day uh, thank you to uh, Bruce Wise who's a big contributor to our show uh, he did a, a very funny Memorial Day picture for our logo. See, Brian, happy, it's happy. Happy Memorial Day. Yes, yeah, Storming D-Day with a volleyball uh, a beach ball. Uh, the song was from Brian Copeland this week. Thank you, Brian. Also Thank a big Brian. supporter of the show. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, we did have some corrections. I guess we got a couple things wrong last week. Oh, boy. Rick said uh, Khmer Rouge was a Cambodian group, which the Vietnamese communist government attacked. I think I said that the Khmer Rouge was a North Vietnamese group. Ah, uh, okay. He also said, are there... CO leaks in your office. You can't remember Ryan Gosling? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, well I don't know what CO means now. That's not... CO? Is he talking about carbon monoxide? I don't know. Carbon oxide? I don't know what CO is. I'm going to look it up. Rick said the French Revolution was in 1789 and Napoleon was last a leader of the French in 2015. I think he meant... 1815 so rick i got a correction for your correction i love um, it send so, it back his way and i hope you're wrong so he counter corrects you bob Co-co- Pedersen, who is our anally retentive 
Corrections guy said, part one, dickhead Brian corrected my previous correction. Gray, gray versus grow and the pronunciation of Matt Graining's name was not my correction. What actually happened was you, Greg, did not realize Graining has two letter N's in the spelling. You said groaning without the second N. Jesus Christ, get it right, Greg. Get it right, dickhead Brian. Second wow, one. Wow, look at them. Part look at two. Them. A Gentleman in Moscow, you were telling Mike about the book this week. The book was written by a man named Amor Towles. Amor Towles is a man, not a woman, as you stated. Also, the book did not win the Pulitzer Prize, as you stated. Uh. <laughs> I got it confused with the uh, uh, the one about the, Viet- the, the Vietnamese show, uh, which was a book, which did win the Pulitzer. Um, the, I forget what it's called. Anyway, uh, so Amor Tal's never won the... Also, my wife thinks you and Mike Gibbons are misogynist assholes for saying a gentleman in Moscow sounds soft and must be written by a woman. She doesn't get your tone. She thinks you were serious. Um, I think we were. Weren't we serious? Well... I've I've never read nor seen oh, or okay. know anything about a gentleman in Moscow. I mean, is it wrong to say that a woman can't Sounds have... Sounds like his wife's a little soft. She's a little soft. It seems yeah. to me that it's a compliment to say that women have a, embrace a more rich emotional take on stories than men. Yeah, and to have like a lighter touch, especially when it comes to punchlines, you know, that they're more subtle and rounded and they don't like hit you as hard. No, I think that's you don't considerate. Even, you don't even know that it was a punchline sometimes. That's how right. subtle it is. Yeah. Yeah. And then forget about the gay guys writing books. Those are, they, those get me horny as shit. There you go. By the way, CO is carbon monoxide. How about them apples? Wow. Yeah. Um, Daniel Preston said on this week's past episode, On this past week's episode, you were listing your upcoming shows. The June 23rd show with Burt Kreischer is not, in fact, in Buffalo, New York. It is in Darien Center, New York, at the Darien Lake Amphitheater. Well, I'm flying into Buffalo. That's all I know. You're shuffling off to Darien? Actually, I don't know if I'm flying to Buffalo because I'm in Pittsburgh the night before, and so is Burt. Uh, So I don't know if I'm getting on the tour bus and going from Pittsburgh to upstate New York. You're That's, coincidentally in Pittsburgh? Yes. Wow. And I saw Bert the other night, and I go, hey, I'm in Pittsburgh the same night as your show. And here's what here's what Bert said. He goes, oh, yeah, you're there the night before. I know you're doing the K, KDVE Festival, the WDVE Festival, which is a radio station. And I'm like, how the fuck do you know that? Do you know how much information Bert Kreischer has in his head at all times? Yeah. He knows everybody. He remembers everything. He's completely aware. It's it's really like kind of mind boggling. Right. Yeah. But especially he said, what he does to his memory very actively. I know. And he's like, no, you are on that Pittsburgh show. So uh, I don't want to, f- I don't know. I, I don't even know who to talk to when I get booked up with Bert. It's all so nebulous. Right. Also, usually his tour bus is full, right? Oh, You've it's going to be it. full. Yeah. You've been on it, yeah. So maybe you'll sleep in the same uh, bunk as he. Uh, tour dates are Mamaroneck, New York, the Emelyn Theater, Westchester County, May 31st. This is my hometown. Not my town, but my home county. So I got a lot of my sisters coming out. I got a bunch of friends coming out, high school friends, college friends. Um, it's going to be pretty amazing. So don't forget to get tickets for that. Escondido at the Grand Comedy Club, June 7th and 8th. Pittsburgh at the WDVE Festival, June 21st. And then somewhere near Buffalo, New York, the Darien Lake Amphitheater, June 23rd. Uh, Also, we want to say support for Sunday Papers comes from Mint Mobile. Oh, boy. There it is, Mint Mobile. Listen, my favorite spring cleaning takeaway is the post-clean clarity you get. Wow. Wow. How have I been living like this? It's like when you find out that you've been paying a fortune for wireless. When Mint Mobile has a phone plan for $15 a month where you purchase a three-month plan. I mean, how have I been affording this? It's time to switch to Mint Mobile, get unlimited talk, text, and data for $15 a month. And I'll tell you something. I got this. The quality, it's as good as any 
wireless I've ever had. Nation's it is... largest 5G network. Oh, is that what it is? Yes, oh, that's sir. What, oh, that's why. All right, that makes sense. So um, if you're paying these huge bills, <clears throat> it's, you know, you're being taken advantage of. Mint Mobile is, I mean, 15 bucks a month, and, and it's, it, it's just, you, all you got to do is sign up for three months. So um, do it today, Mint Mobile, uh, to get this new customer offer and get your three-month unlimited wireless plan for 15 bucks a month. Go to mintmobile.com slash papers. That's mintmobile.com. Dot com slash papers cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash papers $45 upfront payment required equivalent to $15 a month new customers on first three month plan only speed slower above 40 gigabytes on unlimited plan additional taxes fees and restrictions apply see mint mobile for details lovely and then we got game time man oh, we all know about game yeah. time at this point love it uh it's fantastic concerts events everything's faster and easier uh sporting events views. uh music last theater, minute comedy. deals my one of my favorite things is the all-in prices so you don't have to guesstimate that it's going to be twice as much as listed like with the other ones um they take the guesswork out of buying tickets I love browsing through, so we'll go in. I love the Discover mode, which is uh, not sports or music or shows. You just put Discover in. So I just put it in. I'm here in Nashville. Okay, a couple of interesting things. I don't know Noah Kahan, but he's at Bridgestone for 181, and that's tonight. So that's a hot ticket, but keep an eye on game time, and it's going to go down. Look at this one. You and I have to think about this one. Brian Posehn. We both know Brian Posehn. It says a ticket to see him was $705. What? <laughs> and then I just pressed on it, and now it says it's $167. What, but what is this? Are there like three seats? It's at a winery. No, no offense to Posehn. I, Posehn's hysterical, but I don't know what's going on there. Anyway, we're going to keep an eye on that one. What do we got? We got the Grand Ole Opry tonight. We got uh, the Decemberist. We got G Flip. Um, so anyway, so you're, you're then, making it sound like there's a lot going on in Nashville tonight. Nitty gritty dirt band. Oh, there you go. Now you got something. Yeah. What else? Well, we I am going again to the Grateful Dead. My friend Dan Brickner bought his tickets on Game Time and uh, got a great deal. I'm looking at the tickets now, though, and game time is showing me that they actually went down. He could have, if he just waited, you got to wait. wait. Last minute tickets. <clears throat> you can wait for June 12th. James Taylor is in town. Then Alanis Morissette. And then uh, who else here? Hootie with the blowfish of all things. Oh, he's still with them? I like this. Hot Wheels monster trucks. No, oh, Bridgestone or In the Bridgestone Arena. Anyway. Uh, it's easy to find uh, all these things that you want. Uh, what else Guarantee do I got to say? Guarantee 110% of the difference if you find the same seats in the same row on the same night. So Flash deals they have. They have zone deals. The all-in pricing, lowest price guaranteed. So take the guesswork out of buying concert tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code PAPERS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code P-A-P-E-R-S for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Guaranteed. You got it. I don't, Can we get I a have, crinkle? I have bubble wrap. Nice. Wait, I can do better. I can always do better. And I always really do. Always do better. That is the secret to life. Always right. do better. This will just be five minutes. Now, here we go. Oh, that's oh, like anytime paper. somebody gets canceled, the apology always says, I can do better. I will do better. Um, oh, you know what paper I pulled out? Oh, uh, your, your future daughter-in-law's journal? <laughs> uh, no, I could read a little of this. I know, I know we've done it to death, but... It's hard to talk about it because uh, people are wondering what happened. But Ben Affleck at the roast, we wrote him a lot of really good stuff. And he went his own way. And then he went off script a lot and off prompter a lot. Anyway, this is just a short little run I'll read, which is funny. 
we wrote something at the end where, because he comes out defending Tom. That was what he wanted to do. He didn't want to be on there because he's too good a target. So he goes, I've heard all the jokes making insinua uh, insinuating that Tom is gay. Really? This man's man, the epitome of straight male masculinity, you're saying he's gay? Tom is not gay. Trust me. I know not gay. I was just talking about this with my lifelong male partner, Matt, you know, the guy who played Liberace's boyfriend in Behind the Candelabra. And Matt was soups in agreement with me. Brady is not gay. Tonight, Bledsoe said Tom is gay because he drove a yellow Jeep. That makes him gay. It was a Jeep. It wasn't rollerblades and it still runs as good as the day Tom gave it to me. A 46-year-old guy who's famously had two long-term girlfriends is gay. Get fucked. <laughs> and it just goes uh, on and on. Uh, wait, where does it go? Uh, oh, and all these guys are saying that he wouldn't shower with the team. And it, he's like, God, that makes him gay. He's the only one who refuses to shower with other men. And it's not because he doesn't want to be seen in the shower. Fun fact, his hedges at home are short. If I stand on top of the Jeep, I can see everything. <laughs> who's gay now? <laughs> that's good yeah so anyway uh all right why don't you crinkle that shit here it is there we go 13 harvard university yeah. students who participated in the pro-palestinian protest <laughs> encampment on campus will not get their Degrees at commencement on Thursday, the university's top governing board rejected a recommendation from faculty members to allow the students to graduate with their classmates. The students will be able to, to participate in ceremonies, but will not receive degrees. So, I mean, look, this is Harvard. They tried to not give me my diploma and it wasn't because I didn't support the Jews. I bought hundreds of drinks for Jewish girls at BU. <laughs> Cab rides home. Abortions. I oh, gave geez. money to the Jewish cause. Still, they wouldn't give me my diploma. Grades? I, something, about, so, something about grades? Some bullshit? Such a bad move. Well, now, you know, now they're not only going to hate Jews, they're going to hate wasps. <laughs> this is going to massively <laughs> right, backfire. right. This will really calm them down. Also, didn't they want to like get together with their classmates? And now they're saying, no, be separate. That's not a joke. I'm, it's a real right. comment. Right. Cambridge is the new Gaza. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Um, I don't know what they did, by the way. I really don't know the details of this story. But I think they set up an encampment. And they were told to take it down, and they didn't. And, uh, you know... I don't know. Look, I'm not taking a side on this, but I think that it is weird when you've got these liberal progressive colleges that don't allow freedom of speech and people go, oh, well, they're threatening Jewish lives. No, they're not. Are they really? I, I That's, haven't heard. There's always a couple fringe people that aren't even students that are like rabble rousers, but I haven't heard of like, you know, actual physical anti-Semitism. What, what, I don't want to get into this. What the fuck do I know? Well, the problem I barely is read anything about it. These colleges are giant corporations now. That's the problem. Yeah. Um, American Airlines flight attendant allegedly filmed a girl nine in the bathroom on the flight. <clears throat> this story has a twist in the tail. Uh, so here we go. When the having that, that was not wordplay. When the uh, nine-year-old girl walked into the bathroom during the January 26th flight, uh, Estes Carter Thompson the third. That's no. the flight attendant allegedly asked her to wait. He went into the bathroom before her and told her that he needed to clean up a mess in the lavatory before she could use it. Thompson saved images of Mary Doe's face, uh, unclothed buttocks and genitalia to his iCloud account that he got from the camera that he installed before she oh, went in. Oh, I see. This isn't the first time Thompson has been accused of secretly recording a minor with his phone. Thompson was arrested in January in Lynchburg after he allegedly filmed a 14-year-old girl using an airplane bathroom on a flight from Charlotte to Boston, and he's been in a federal and he's been in federal custody since. But now, get this. Attorneys for American Airlines claimed in a court filing this week that the 9-year-old girl 
who was allegedly allegedly filmed by the flight attendant's hidden phone in the bathroom, she's the one to blame for the incident. She should have been aware that she was being recorded while using the bathroom during the flight from Austin to L.A. What? That, yes. Is that the biggest <sighs> case of gaslighting you've ever heard in your life? It's insane. And also, like, for, at least she was on American. On Spirit, you have to pay extra to be filmed in the bathroom. Oh, that's it's, right. Overhead and it's child an porn. Is, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They, and, you, and they don't, the thing is, they don't tell you that till checkout. You pick your seat. I expect to pay for pay, picking my seat. I expect right. paying for overhead. But, you know, to put a simple camera going to my iCloud in the bathroom? <laughs> Come on. Where's it's your fair. Spirit? You're, you're not just filming me. You're going to film other people also. All I know there. is I uh, I hoped there was no cameras on any of my flights for the first 20 years that I was a comedian. I don't do it anymore. <laughs> but back when I could free solo without porn, I used to use the restroom as a way to relax on all my flights. As soon as that fasten your seatbelt thing became unlit, I was in that bathroom, <laughs> forehead against the wall, <laughs> because you had to be precise. You know, you got to first of all line the line the bowl because there's no water. It's air that that flushes the feces and whatever. It doesn't clean up with air, and so it's not just air, but especially when you used it, there's yeah. there, there there's a little uh, a little sheen of uh, whatever it is, some cleaning fluid. But I can't close. I can't close uh, without porn anymore. I'm 58. I need is help. That, that's where this story went. Now we're yeah. now we're onto that. Yeah, I bet you can. But the idea is how long have you, you know, you can't not, not day in, day out. No, every couple days, maybe. If you wait long enough, you could do it without porn. Yeah. Right. You have to clear your hard drive. You got to clear your, your cookies and your caches. You don't need porn all the time. Sometimes you look through your uh, someone's windows in a, in a hotel that you're staying at. <laughs> that Nick gets Dupal, it done for you. Nick DePaul used to have this joke. He goes, uh, uh, he goes, I'm walking back to the bathroom on a flight to jerk off. And this fat flight attendant goes, you going to be in there long? He's like, I am now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All right, uh, we're moving on. Another, right. another, another provocative flag was flown at another of Justice Alito's homes. An appeal to heaven flag was hung outside Justice Samuel Alito's vacation home. The white flag dates back to the Revolutionary War and has a green pine tree and the words appeal to heaven across the top. In recent years, the flag has been embraced by Christian nationalists and it was featured prominently in the symbols waved during a Trump rally. No and the way. And the subsequent riot on January 6th. It's the second symbol reportedly displayed outside the Alito home that has a connection to the January 6th riot. An upside down American flag, a symbol of the Stop the Steal movement, was hung outside the Alito home days after the January 6th attack. Um, Alito told the Times that he had no involvement whatsoever in the flying of the Appeal to Heaven flag. He said it was briefly placed by his wife in response to a neighbor's use of objectionable and personally insulting language on yard signs. Mm. Yeah, the yard sign said, take the upside down American flag down, you fucking traitors. Yeah, right. Jesus. I mean, here's the problem with giving people jobs for life is they got a little too much security. The, you know, look at the Pope. The Pope for life oversees pedophilia, hiding pedophilia. You know, Russian presidents the, who yeah. they never get voted out. And look what they do. Like, they, there has to be the fear of being fired in every job. Roger Goodell in the NFL. Corrupt right? as hell. Um, um, oh, this, this is a horrible story. Yeah, this is... Um, the, the flag being upside down. I was a parking attendant at a country club in White Plains, New York. And I my job as a parking attendant was to take the flag out first thing in the morning. A lot of the membership were veterans. And the flag was sacred. 
and we would carry it out with our arms straight in a triangle and we would put it, two of us would go. Only one of us needed to be there, but they insisted both parking attendants walked out, clipped it on, raised it up and then saluted it and then walk away. And so uh, they, the other job we had was to drive down to Chinatown before the 4th of July and buy fireworks out of the trunks of organized crime in Chinatown. <laughs> and then on the 4th of July, we, who were 17 at the time, were in charge of lighting off a fireworks show on the 5th Fairway while everybody sat in lounge chairs on the, uh, on the porch. <laughs> so we're lighting off fireworks and... Uh, we had forgotten to take down the flag or maybe they wanted the flag. Usually at sundown, we would take down the flag. I think that's what you're supposed to do. Right. But it was left up because it was the 4th of July and a bottle rocket hit the flag and it started, uh, it, it wasn't on fire, but it made a black mark that started smoking and these guys went <laughs> fucking nuts. They came running out. They ripped it down. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you want us to do? It wasn't a statement. I just don't know how to shoot a fucking bottle rocket. That's hysterical. Yeah. I remember, I forget what the bit was, but I remember I had some stupid idea for a sketch where the person was going to, you know, it was a popular thing, like to shit, like some performance piece was someone shit on the American flag on stage or something like that. Do you remember? Does that sound familiar? Yeah. So my thing was someone wanted to do that. They were going to shit on the American flag in a performance piece. But they did their grandfather. So, so they didn't want the flag to touch the ground and how awkward it was trying to shit on the flag without it hitting the ground. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> like a, a completely mixed up performance art piece. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was a big thing. Not letting the flag touch the ground was very important. It had to be a tight triangular fold. And then, uh, yeah. yeah. And it had to go up at sunup and go come down at sundown. Um, I didn't know about that part. Is this you, Gen Z woman? This is me. This is me, Gen Z woman, floored by a 35-year-old man's text after their first date. So Elizabeth Castaldi, a popular U.S. creator, uh, whatever that means, has sparked a viral discussion about the generation gap in texting when it comes to dating. Castaldi is 27, recently, not that young, went on a date with a 35-year-old man and she was baffled by the text he sent her the next day. Then in true Gen Z fashion, Castaldi took that private message, screenshotted it, and posted it online where it has amassed uh, more than 500,000 views. So this is it. The guy goes, hey, had fun last night. Have a good day. That's what he texted. So she goes, is he a bad texter or is he just over 35? Uh, let's be clear. I do not have the ick. I just can't read him. And I really, really want to go on a second date. She wrote, can I, and then someone else goes, can I ask what it should say? Because I definitely said, say the same thing. I'm 35. Castaldi responded by saying that emojis and asking for another date were the keys to nailing a post date text. What? He should have used emojis. Oh, maybe oh, he should have gotten you like candy and maybe pulled up to your house and asked if you want to look at puppies in the car Mike? and then abducted you. What are you, five years old? Do you want another Mike? date or an Amber Alert? Oh, you've been, you've been frozen for uh, a little while. Oh, well, the audio works. The good audio just, I just nailed it. Uh, all right, pick it up again from... Uh um, well, everyone, at, everyone listening heard my bit. No, but the video is going to be frozen. Oh, all right. You want me to do it again? Do your little punchline again, funny guy. <laughs> I was just making fun of the fact that, what is she, five years old? She need, Does she want candy? Does she want him to pull up in a car and say, hey, you want to see the puppies and get abducted? <laughs> it's rid- What do you want, another date or an Amber Alert? <laughs> <laughs> They're children. Gen Z is a Gen yeah. Z. They they just like uh, what the f- have the ick. <clears throat> it's everything they say is so childish. Like like uh, talk. They talk like to big yikes. That's another one. They say big yikes. <laughs> they call people a simp. And, and they're like this person is extra or that's extra. Oh, gagged. Yeah. They say gagged about something. I how about this one? I ooped. That's a big one. 
I, I ooped. ooped. I made ooped in my pants. And the fact that none of them can wrap their heads around the concept of what gaslighting is. They call every insult a gaslight, even when I it know. has nothing to do with that. Uh, did we ever bring this up before? It's not exactly on topic, but in terms of things that I see this new generation saying, they doing things on accident. Yeah, yeah. Have we gotten into that? No. I don't like it. It's by accident, right? It's by accident. Yeah. And I think they say on accident because the opposite is on purpose. Oh, I see. Yep. Anyway. That's, I also that's... don't like uh, out here, my kids say that they take a shot. And in New York, you say. You do a shot. You do a shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, take a there's shot online sounds like you're and in Right. Are you standing in line or online? Yeah, you're standing in line. Yeah, in line. Yeah. Uh, these kids, these goddamn kids. Get in line, right? That's saying. All right, what about this one? Um, yes, mom fined $88,000 after kids collect 72 clams from California Beach thinking they were seashells. Charlotte Russ was on a family trip to Pismo Beach, known as the clam capital of the world. I've never heard of that. When she said her kids picked up 72 clams. Well, right there, she should have said shells. Anyway, the Department of Fish and Wildlife confronted the mother of five and told her that her kids were collecting the clams without a license, and they issued her a ticket. They know now at the beach, don't touch anything, but they know now what a clam is compared to what a seashell is now. I, this, no wonder they're idiots. I I've had to explain that to them, she said. Making light of the harmless mix-up, Russ showed that she got a shellfish tattooed on her arm to remember the situation after she won her case. So they reduced the fine. I didn't put that stuff in here. But it, the original fine was for uh, $88,000. Wait, so she fucks up and gets a tattoo? Does she have a tattoo of her holding Jack Daniels behind the wheel of a car? Is that the <laughs> other thing that she got picked up for? Or what about just uh, holding Jack Daniels when she's uh, pregnant also? <laughs> That's just in there, too, with these idiot kids. Look at the shells. By the way, if you're, if you're watching the podcast, uh, you can see a picture of this family. They are bloated. I, I can't believe that one picture could fit them all in it. So it looks like they were pretty much picking up anything that was edible. It wasn't about the clams. You know that you can choose your picture size. This is already when, when you do that, like I copied and pasted in here. It's like, this is way too big. This file is way, <laughs> way too big. It's giga upon giga. It's tetra upon tetra bites. Um, yeah. yeah. They take a lot of bites in that family. <laughs> yeah. Their defense should have been, uh, we eat shells. We eat anything. We eat shells also. So we, we didn't know what the chewy inside was called. That, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's, sorry about that. Yeah. By the way, I thought when you went to the beach and picked up clams, that was like a spring break thing for fraternity brothers. <laughs> Dude, did you pick up some clam? Did you get some clam last night? No, that's crabs. Oh, that's true. <laughs> you get both. Uh, let's go to entertainment. Oh, boy. Here comes a crinkle. All right, I'm just going to lead with, uh, I think the best new show on TV is Shane Gillis has a show that it, it's just even the title. I'm going to watch it tonight. Even the title is funny. It's just called Tires. It's yeah. about these guys that work in a tire shop. And literally, I've seen five episodes. I haven't seen them outside of the tire shop. It's just a grimy, there's like an office and then the garage. And that's all, the whole fucking show. And Sounds it's just like a taxi. It's just like a bunch of guys saying racist, homophobic, sexist jokes in the way guys actually do. And I, you mentioned that it's not getting great reviews. I think this show was made for me, you, and about 12 other guys. I can't wait. I it's can't perfect. wait to see it. Yeah. I He's saw, so fucking funny. I saw Shane in Instagram. He was on a podcast or something, and he told a story. Did you see the story he told about... They went to laser tag as a family. <laughs> no. And they, they went to laser tag. And when you get in there, then the lights go off 
and it's all blue light, right? Yeah. And his dad's jeans have splooge all over ah. the front of the jeans. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. All right, I'm just looking up the cast because there was some people. Oh, uh, 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 Stavros, you know that guy? Yeah. Uh, Halkius or whatever. Yeah. He's fucking, he's really good. Andrew Schultz kills it. Um, what can't that guy do? Jesus. Yeah. He killed it on the roast too. I thought he was, you know, uh, going on last in a three hour show. Yeah. That was pretty amazing. No, when he sent his material in, it was pretty, pretty great. Yeah. And then I told you the thing was he had a joke. I told, I think I said that about craft and I told him to take it out. Then Jeff Ross did it. And I'm like, Oh no, he's going to think I like cock blocked him to protect Jeff. Yeah. And now he's going to do his because his was even harder. Yeah. And thank God Brady got up and did that, which was real. And because uh, then Schultz didn't do his. Oh, OK. Yeah. Um, did you say Andrew Schultz? Yeah. Yeah, you did. OK. I think, right? Yeah. You know so. what it was? I think you did. And I I think I might have heard Andrew Santino, but uh, we know who we're talking about. Yeah. Um. All right, I can't wait to see it. Now, you put dark in here. Did I put that in there, or did you? No, I think that was left over from last week. Oh, all right. So, dark, I tried I think we watching. Talked about, I, yeah. yeah, I think we talked about it. It's a German show. Yeah, I fell asleep, which I is, it was late. I'm not blaming the show. And then I'd wake up, and I'm like, whoa. What's, so, I woke up, right? And I see stuff, I'm like, I have, oh, my God, how long was I asleep just now? Because this is completely different and i was asleep for two minutes <laughs> <laughs> so so a lot of people are like it's very hard to follow but but there is chatter about this show dark i have no idea if it's yeah, good or not yeah and I've, I've heard i've heard really great things about it you know what's really good is hacks have you seen that show hacks I have not seen Hacks. Jean Smart, who's amazing. She's amazing. And then uh, Lorraine Newman's daughter. I wish I could remember her name. She's yeah. fantastic. Um, really smart, funny show. And as a comic, I feel like they pretty much nail a lot of the stuff, especially about being an aging comedian and starting right. to feel like sidelined a little bit, uh, which I've heard from other comics, not me, but I've heard other no, comics feel no, that yeah. way um, as I'm playing the fucking outside of buffalo somewhere uh not even buffalo buffalo jason uh jennifer jennifer is lopez yours? responds to questions about the status of her relationship with ben affleck now having just worked with ben affleck uh how can i say this diplomatically i think something's going on I, that's all I'll really? say. So it happened during a Lopez appearance in Mexico to promote her new Netflix movie, Atlas. Her response was to lean forward and look straight at the questioner and say, you know better than that. You know better than that? Right. I, it, what a weird response. And that, that doesn't address it. Yeah. And then Ben was, and then, uh, Affleck was asked the same question. They said, "Are you single?" And he said, "No, I'm still with, I'm still with Matt Damon." <laughs> look at that! I foreshadowed that with the uh, there gay you stuff go. earlier. Uh, well, there. I mean, look. Uh, I think this is a bad couple to begin with. You can't have two mega alpha people together. It's not even that. She's a disaster, man. Uh, well, so is he. They're both disasters. That's true. And she only dates famous people. But to say you know better than that, it's like if I was the reporter, I'd be like, um, you know what? We don't. We don't know better than that because look at your dating history. So in 97, you got married and you divorced 11 months later. And who did you move on to? Because of your great way to pick potential mates, you dated Diddy. Yeah. After Diddy, you and Chris Judd got married and you tied the knot in September of 2001, a good month. 911. And you last that marriage lasted 9 months. Then you got engaged to Ben Affleck in November 20 2002. Then you got married to Mark Anthony in 2004. Jeez, really? 
Yeah, yeah. Then you date that that one a while. They had kids, and that went to uh, 2011. And then uh, you dated Bo Casper Smart, who I don't really know what that is, but it was just four months after splitting with Mark Antony. And then you, uh, he was a backup singer, I guess. Uh, but you, Smart had been exchanging photos and messages with a transgender model. Sweet. S so that's the guy you picked right after your divorce. Then you dated Drake, and I think you might have cheated on Drake. That's just me saying that because Alex Rodriguez stepped in, and that was January 2017 she started dating Drake. They broke up in February the next month, and that's when she started seeing Alex Rodriguez. Whoa. They postponed their wedding multiple times. They're working, and then they split, and now she's with Affleck. Wow. Uh, they split in March 2021, and then I guess April 2022, she announced that they're, oh, so started dating him before that, and then engaged to him in April 2022. I mean, look, here's what's consistent when you're J-Lo. You are on the road, or on a movie set, or in makeup. She's in makeup most of the day. And then she's never home. You're not having a relationship with this person. This is a press appearance. You show up for red carpets. Maybe you do some weekends at, 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 at St. Tropez to take pictures. There's no building of a solid relationship when you date somebody like this. And now you're dating A-Rod, who's on the road nine months of the year. When do they link up? I'm curious how many hours they actually spent together during their quote unquote relationship. Yeah. And yeah, everything is so public. And then when she ever is, does a breakup, all of a sudden she's everywhere without clothes on, like barely dressed in photo shoots and getting her body out there so she can get all the praise for how good she looks at her age. And I just, I remember the Mark Antony uh, divorce it was pathetic, both of them. Like, it was a competition who could be seen with more new people, like out in clubs. And I'm like, yeah. you, you people have fucking children. Yeah, yeah. It's it was crazy. crazy. Yeah, well, maybe maybe she should marry George Lopez. Why is that? Then she doesn't have to do all the paperwork of changing her name. And then when she breaks up, it'll be that much faster uh, and cleaner. He might want another, he might want a kidney though. If his uh, wife's oh, first kidney yeah. fails inside him, which uh, I can't believe it hasn't already. Yeah. Wives for him are more like, uh, they're like uh, farms. They're <laughs> <laughs> a backup server type, yeah. type of thing. Yeah. 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 Right. Uh, Hulu's Virgin Island. It's a dating show for celibates has opened its uh, application process. According to Hulu, Virgin Island will host a bunch of hot virgins at an island resort where they will look for the one, the first one, I guess you should say. Throughout the 10 episode series, the contestants will go on dates and participate in romantic activities as they, prayer, as they prepare to renounce their V cards. Nice. I think this is a remake because the original one was set on Epstein's private islands. <laughs> Clinton not. won't, except Clinton won't be in this one. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> and I heard next season they're going the opposite direction. No Virgin Island. It's going to be filmed on Staten Island. They should just have Comic-Con on the island and it takes care of itself. <laughs> no one has to, not a huge right. vetting process. You don't have to prove they're virgins. Yeah, that's hilarious. That's it. It'll be everyone walking around in superhero outfits. Yeah, I think I, I'm i a little bit compelled to watch this. <clears throat> they're all nuns and priests. They're uh, all, when you, well, and no, I wouldn't believe that. They're huh? going to be all Christians. No, they, it, nuns and priests would be... Yeah. Having sex, but with someone from the opposite sex for the first time. Slut Island, Florida. Oh, Florida. Let's make let's make America Florida. Here we go. Florida man shot by mother-in-law after birth of his son. Oh, jeez. <laughs> um. So this guy Keating told them that he arranged with Conley, that's his mother, to take over caring for his daughter on Sunday, according to the report. And when Keating arrived home to get his daughter, Conley was waiting outside his front door and asked him, did you see the rainbow? Right after that, Conley fired. <laughs> 
he he said that he believed a second shot went off before he tackled Conley into a bush and ran to his neighbors to seek help. Keating had a gunshot wound on the upper left side of his chest and an exit wound on his back. Jeez. Authorities found Conley at her home shortly after the shooting, and her husband mentioned she had returned from their son-in-law's home but was unaware of any issues. <laughs> Conley stated she never saw Keating at his house, according to the affidavit. However, police reported noticing recent bruises on Conley's arm and knee consistent with Keating's account of pushing her into a bush. So, you know, they get there and there are cigarettes out. They got a can of beer. Yeah. And they're like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Heartbeat flat pulse. <laughs> normal. No sweat. Just another night in Florida. I love that. <laughs> Did you see the rainbow? Like, I mean, you re- I, in my opinion, you really don't see it coming after that question. <laughs> I don't yeah. think I'm going to get shot yeah. when my mother-in-law asked me, did I see the rainbow? Well, he should have known something was wrong because there's, with DeSantis, there's no longer any rainbows in Florida. <laughs> they outlawed That's right. Them. They're all outlawed, exactly. Maybe she's <laughs> furious about that. Maybe she was calling him gay. <laughs> yeah. That should be a defense because I think in Florida you're allowed to shoot gay people. You just can't kill them, but you can shoot them. Yeah, Pretty you can sure. st- stand in your straight ground. Exactly. All right, we're going to make Alabama, Florida. Let's do it. An Alabama man willing to serve jail time. Oh, sorry. An Alabama. Oh, boy. An Alabama man is willing to serve jail time for not apologizing to a cop. I love this. An Alabama man says he's. And I think we might have covered this story. Or I saw it earlier. And anyway, the guy's sticking to his guns. An Alabama man says he's willing to serve 30 days in jail rather than apologize to a police officer as ordered by a municipal judge after being accused of disrespecting the officer during a traffic stop. The case stems from a speeding ticket Burks received in Ozark, Alabama. The judge required Burks to write a letter of apology to the officer who pulled him over after Burks allegedly told the officer get your ass out of the way so he could get his kids to school. So I do remember this story. I was going to put it in one week and I didn't. Um, He was, so the apology is not about a crime. He did not commit a crime, but he did tell the officer to get his ass out of the way because his kids are going to be late for school. And now he's told uh, to write an apology, but get this, uh, it's protected You are allowed to be profane. It's protected by law. You are allowed to be profane to an officer of law. I did not know that. I love that. That's fantastic. Well, look, it was in Ozark, Alabama. If you put Ozark and Alabama together, (laughs) you're going to have some conflict with authorities and and grammar. (laughs) Right. And uh, also the cop, the cop must have known Burks was lying because there's no schools anymore in Alabama. They gave right. up on that shit a long time ago. You can't be late to homeschool. <laughs> <laughs> they consistently, Mississippi and Alabama consistently have the lowest, the worst education systems in the country, except Los Cali- Angeles. Yeah. California's pretty, pretty far California's up California's really bad. It's not good at all. No bueno, as they say in the California school system. All right. Here we go, little sports. Okay. All right. The Knicks are gone, everybody. Uh, New York Knicks knocked out. Fucking got blown out in game six or seven, whatever it was. I was just about to jump on that bandwagon. Yeah, but the Rangers are still alive. Uh, they lost to the Florida Panthers about 3 nothing last right. night, two nights Ex- ago. Yeah, except as I t- you didn't know this, but it's a deceiving score. But it was third period, and they were down one nothing. And then Florida scored, and the guy was in the crease too early, and they called it back. So it went back to one nothing, And it might have been one nothing with like – 
six minutes left, something like that. Anyway, one was an empty netter, and uh, but they they yeah they won three zero uh, at home. The Rangers. Ah. ah, I know. Well, not good. All right, let's go to international. That's our sports. That's our whole sports <clears throat> section. What else? Uh, you know what's fun to do in, in speaking of sports, just for a second. So like I'm watching. So the Timberwolves play tonight. Uh, it's Friday. They play tonight. And so uh, that Norm McDonald bet, that was his favorite bet. I think I told you about it called Lightning. What's so that? Lightning is very simple. You do the over under. But every point that it's over, you get an extra thousand dollars or you uh-huh. lose an extra. And every point that it's under, wow. same thing. Each point is a thousand. So at the end of a game, when a meaningless three is launched, that's three thousand dollars if it goes in. <laughs> No, you can lose. You can lose twenty eight thousand dollars in one. By the game. way, I mean, didn't we start a bet on unders and overs in the NBA playoffs or something? I think we might have done this and say we were. Yeah, I think we did, I think and we, we didn't follow to do up. It. Yeah, I forgot what it was, and we we found the over under. I remember that. As I'm saying all this, I'm like, uh, I've done. I wish I had another podcast to blame it on, but this is the only one I do. So uh, it was here. Well, all right, let's anyway, go. Let's go it, international. I have done it, though, with uh, Hannah and I, like, pretend that we have a 1,000 on the line uh, at the end of the game. Here we go. International. Uh, the misbehavior at the New York City Dublin portal that caused organizers to shut down the live stream link between the two cities... Uh, including a New Jersey only fan star who flashed the screen was inevitable, said the director of the company. Uh, Joe Callahan said the portals organization is working on a high tech fix, including an AI sensor that will blur naughty stunts. Even before Ava Louise's stunt, attention seekers on the Irish side of the portal grabbed headlines by flashing their backsides, swastikas. <laughs> <laughs> And images of September 11th terror attacks on the eight-foot screen. I think this is just so great. You take the two most raucous, deviant groups of humans in the world, the Irish and New Yorkers, and you give them a camera to do whatever they want with it. They should have put it in Gaza. There would have been less, (laughs) less, but Gaza and Tel Aviv should have been the two, the portal. And by the way, September eleventh, September eleventh images no longer shock or bother New Yorkers. They've seen it. They've watched it over and over again. If you want to get a reaction, put up an image of a Dodge Challenger with Jersey plates coming in through the Lincoln Tunnel. That will upset New Yorkers. The Flyers in Madison Square Garden holding up the Stanley Cup. That will bother New Yorkers. Cats coming back to Broadway. Trump it clearly, yeah. It, Trump they heading show, over they, the George Washington Bridge in a U-Haul. <laughs> they show uh, 9-11 images, and how do we respond? We show them boobs. <laughs> that's, a pre- <laughs> I, that's a pretty good exchange, I think. Yeah, who wins on that one? Yeah, Ireland. What are you doing, man? Um, I like the experiment. We should do something like that. In what way? I don't know. We should pick a place. And set up a camera during our podcast and have people be able to show up. Maybe a comedy club would set up a camera for us and we could tape and let audience members in Cleveland, Ohio. No, Philly, because you hate Philly. I'll have the Helium Comedy Club in Philly set up a camera for people walking into the into the club and it'll be on the Zoom call, and they can do or say anything they want to us during the podcast. And you can say whatever you want to them. Oh, well, all right. I think there's a lot of logistics here. What time of day would this be in Philly? It'd have to be at like 7 o'clock as people are loading in for the show, which would be 4 o'clock our time. Uh, all right. All right. Denman, um, are you on the call? Uh, Denman's not on with us. Well, I'll call him <laughs> later. I'll tell him to set it up. He'll be right on top of it. That sounds like a pipe dream, but all right. I like all right. it. Uh, all right. Let's skip science. Do yep. we wanna, yeah. Let's skip science. Do we want to? Yeah. We're going to this day in history. Ready? Let's go to this day in history. All 
All right, let me find my data well, I'll here. I'll start right? with a piece of mail from Rob who says, I love how Mike subtly acts like he's smarter than you when he quizzes you on the on the past events I am. Uh, that he's researched and you haven't. It would be fun one week to have someone else come up with the questions and have you both guess the years and see who is closest. If no one else is up for doing homework, I could come up with a list of events for you two to guess the years of. That's pretty good. Uh, so it yeah. wouldn't be this day in history. It would just be a bunch of events, and we He's, name the years. And then whoever is closer wins. I like that. That's good. He's missing. I, I, I do want to do that. But he is missing part of what the dynamic, which is I am playing a game also, which is I'm thinking about how close you'll get to the date. It's true. And I'm choosing a range. You're the bookie. Right. You're Vegas. So, right. So the lines makers deserve some credit. That's that's what I'm not celebrating that. Oh, my God. You did not know when uh, Martin Luther was declared a heretic by the Edict of Worms. 14, I'm saying. 12. Huh? 1412. Okay. So hold on. I was going to say give or take 100 years. Yeah. When was Martin Luther declared a heretic by the Edict of Worms? 1412. 1521. <laughs> Are you serious? So this is why I'm great. <laughs> I I gave you 100 years and you missed it. Ugh. Give or take uh give or take 6 years. Keep in mind, that's a 12-year range I'm giving you. No, 13. I'm giving you a 13-year range, I believe that is. Uh what year? It's his birthday. What year was John Wayne born? Oh, John Wayne was born in 1925. Wow, 1907. No. Yes. Oh, so he probably did black and white movies when he first started. Um, I wonder when the jazz singer was. Oh, that's the first talkie. When was the? Yeah, yeah. Well, yes, he did. No, the, some of the westerns were black yeah. and white. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Um. Okay, let's see. Oh, well, that's not as interesting. Uh, but uh, why don't we do? I was gonna say when, do, what, give or take five five years. <clears throat> when was Vincent Price born? Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, I think he, in the 70s, he was in his 70s. I'm going to say 1906. What, what year? 1906. Uh, 1911. And you said five years, so I got I it. I did say five years. Yeah. That's how good I am. Again, I'm going to take credit for that. All right, here's uh, maybe the last one. We got the British punk band, the Sex Pistols, released their second single, God Save the Queen. Oh, my God, still sounds so edgy. And it was quickly banned by the BBC and other outlets in England. Give or take one year. What year was this? 1977. It was 1977. Nice. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Let me see what else we got here. Uh, not a lot of good ones. Those were the ones I had picked okay, out. Okay, that was good. That was good. I got two two out of three right. Um, all right, what are we on to now? Let's do some obituary action. <clears throat> yeah, here we go. Obits. Uh, and that's all, folks. I thought this one would be good for Memorial Day. Clarence Bud Anderson Jr., a military pilot whose aerial daring do spanned from World War II when he personally shot down 16 German planes in dogfights wow. over occupied Europe to experimental flights in the era of the jet. He died May 17th at his home. He was 102 years old. This is oh my God. he was the the last of the flying aces, by the way, to to die. Um, his daughter confirmed his death, but did not cite a cause. Well, if you've survived 17 missions, who gives a fuck what the cause was? He didn't but die in a plane. His daughter, who's 82, <laughs> by his, the way, 
his probably. Uh, by the way, a, a flying <sighs> ace is defined as somebody with with sixteen. No, you have to have down five or more en- enemy planes. With his sixteen kills, he earned the title three times over. The last surviving triple ace pilot from World War II. Um. I mean, wow. I read a book about the, uh, what was it called? Um, I'll have to look it up. I read this book about the flying aces. These motherfuckers got into big, heavy steel death traps that they barely got off the ground half the time, and they hurled themselves above guns. They knew, the Germans knew they were coming. They knew what spots we were going to bomb, and they were fucking littered with anti-aircraft machine guns. And they would fly in low. Yeah. They get and and the and these guys. What this guy did was these Mustangs, the P fifty one Mustangs, used to go in ahead of the bombers, and they would take flak. They would try to, you know, redirect where the fire was so the other guys could get in and drop the bombs. And half the time, they got shot down, and then they would make their way to the English Channel where there would be hidden American boats that would take them back to England again. Wow. It's crazy. Anderson Anderson named his P-51, which is his plane, Old Crow. Yeah. This guy was cool. God, you know, it's occurring to me. I mean, how many World War II vets are still alive? I mean, we really... We've really, like, I was just down with my dad. So my dad was born in 1940. He's 84. And that generation, 84, is pretty far along. Um, well, I would think the youngest person in World War II would have been born around 1925. So that's uh, 75, nine. So 99 would be the age of about the youngest pilot, the youngest soldier in World War II. Right. Because the war ended in forty five, yeah, and they would have been twenty years old. So yeah. Well, I mean, maybe eighteen, but yeah, you're right there. You're right around. I mean, yeah. that that's unbelievable. Wow, Th- that's it, and that's that's you know not just us. That's everywhere around the world. So taps yeah. off to Bud Anderson. And yeah, his that's plane, a great Memorial Day crow. one. That's amazing. Yeah. And I bet he was with Chuck Yeager and all those guys, too. It sounds like uh, doing all the jet experiments. Yeah, yeah. By the Very way, the, cool rickety, the, the rickety aircraft you describe, I, I'm not even kidding you. I, I thought to myself, oh, you should talk about this on the podcast. Uh, I already mentioned Spirit. So I flew Spirit from Florida to Nashville. And it is, when was the last time you were on a Spirit flight? They've replaced all the seats, which do not lean back. Not they a single seat. They don't lean back. Nope. And they are really thin and it feels like it's like a piece of metal with like leather over it or pleather. And then the tray, I can see the screws that are keeping the tray like in place and also the arms. Oh, and, and like, I couldn't make this seat like the seat. No, it's an Ikea airplane. Right. And I felt like those tin cans that they went to space with and the tin cans that they went to Normandy with, like it's, it really does feel like that. It's unbelievable. And they're not making enough, enough money off charging me for a cup of coffee and put my bag over my head. Give me a yeah. seat that goes back an inch. That's all and, I'm asking. And selling the footage of me taking a dump in the bathroom. Right. That's in their cloud. Without your diaper uh, on. Another obituary. We won't go into it, but it, uh, the news came out today. I couldn't believe this. Morgan Spurlock from Super Size Me. He died from cancer at 53. That's really? crazy. Yeah. And uh, he's done a whole lot of other documentaries and he would usually put himself in it. You know, people are talking about his series being very good. Um, hold on. I've often been Something told I 30. look like him or he looks like me. Oh, all right. Yeah. Um, so I'll play him. I'll play him in his movie. So he did McDonald's for 30 days. Right. But hold on. Let me put in Spurlock. Someone said it was really the top of his game was this series that he did. And um, yeah, I don't know. Just third. All right. Great, great story. Oh, you live in someone else's shoes for 30 days. I think. That's been done. 
They is used what it to was. trade husbands. People used to trade husbands. Oh, God. All right. Shit on the dead guy. I got it. All right. Let's cheer up. All right. Let's cheer up. Here we go. <laughs> okay. It's time for the funnies. Uh, yes. Last week, we announced the uh, beginning of a new competition on the show. User-generated punchlines to single frame cartoons that we supply you with. Now, obviously, you got to look at the YouTube feed to see what the. Uh, I, we should put it up on. I don't know if I want to put that on my uh, Instagram feed, but anyway, we got a lot of people that gave us punchlines. Basically, the frame is it's Mike. Uh, we're both in old timey golf outfits with the little. Uh, what do you call those kind of pants? Pantaloons? I don't know what you call them, but they come like down to your knees. Th- like three-quarter length knickers and yeah. then, uh, the, you know, the bow tie with the vest. Mike is the caddy and I am the golfer. I have a drill in my hand and we are on a putting green and uh, they I have drilled three holes in the green beside the, the actual pin that's in a hole already. So... You gave us punchlines. Here they are. Some are good. Some I didn't get as much. Appreciate the effort on all of them. Joel okay. Bianco said, "Please tell me don't use. Please tell me you don't use this method in the bedroom too." Okay. Uh, Neil Rohrer said, "Greg, you have a vi- vivid imagination. If those three holes remind you of Blondie." Mm. Isaiah said, "Call me old fashioned, but one hole is plenty." Okay, that that could be in the newspaper. Ron Dvorak said, Not funny, Greg. Your drill bit is boring. Ah, a little wordplay. Uh, Yvonne, Ivani? Ivani? Ivani. Yvonne. Kelly. Bob, you're taking putting drills to a whole new level. That's not bad. Uh, uh, Yeah, I guess you're Bob. Adam Milan said, Mike's line is... Greg, look, I just got back from the clubhouse. Let's just say your membership is in the hands of the disgruntled right now. Okay. Not exactly pithy. Nathan said, what are you doing here? And why is your dick so dirty? Okay. I've I've been fucking those holes. Yeah. Chris Jorheim said, Mike, where's the dilly coupling accessory? Greg is on the 18th, and until he starts drinking again, we both know what the 19th hole involves. Huh. Uh Uh-huh. Nicholas Smith said, this golf course is so beautiful. A fantastic part of Mother Nature. True, but just like any beautiful woman, it should come with three holes. All right. All right, and then some people actually typed the words into the thought bubble, which made it a little bit hard to see. So I'm going to try to read those. In the future, just send the lines. You don't have to put them into the picture. I uh, like it. This is from uh, Dave Dorsey. I, I can't see who this is from. Oh, wait. It's from Evan Spellman. I'll tell you the same thing Aaron did 20 years ago, Greg. Just because you've taken eight shots doesn't mean you get to drill two more holes. That's pretty solid. That's pretty good, Evan Spellman. Because one of my things was, uh, what do you think this green is, Aaron? Uh, cause there's, you made three holes, but yeah. so that's close. All right. What, what else here? All right. And now this is from David Dorsey. He says, Oh, grandpa, your mental condition has been ruining a lot of my Saturdays lately. Why don't you go behind that tree in the rough and I'll show you how to use your new head massager properly. That's a nice short story. <laughs> and then Lawrence Zemlick, I didn't hear to do one said, uh, and then I said, you're right. It does feel better with a finger in there. Okay. Uh, two more. Ben Holdridge said, damn it, man. I said the, I said the queen needs a good drilling. The queen. Not the green. Not the green. Steve Grasso said, cheerio, old chap. My game has really improved since they started putting the cups in the rough. It looks it, a little. It doesn't the, look like a green. The, I the will grass say looks that. a little long. So we promised a koozie to the winner, 
And uh, I think it goes to Evan Spellman. Do you agree? I, the uh, I, I, I agree. It goes to Evan okay. Spellman. Evan Spellman, I mean, congratulations with the, I'll tell you the same thing Aaron told you 20 years ago, just because you've taken uh, eight shots doesn't mean you get to drill two more holes. Congratulations, Evan. You, your, your drinks, your cans will be ice cold all summer as you smile and look at the Sunday papers. Cause, by the way, for the rest of you who want to spend a mere $10, including shipping, plenty of koozies left in Mike's living room. Go to fitzdog.com and find out how to bring one into your house for these hot, hot summer days. Next right. week's cartoon strip for you what guys to give us the punchlines to. Again, not in the picture. Just write them in text. From Adam Copeland. And it is a uh, two ketchup packets. This is kind of like a uh, an art project. There's yeah, two it's ketchup. Very, it's very creative. It's very creative. There's one is a ketchup packet of a yeah. guy with a gun in his hand and a cowboy hat and boots, and he has now shot another ketchup packet that looks like uh, another guy with cowboy boots and a hat and a gun's falling out of his hand but there's blood splurting out of the side of that ketchup packet. Very creative. All right. So send in fitsdogradio at gmail.com. Send in your punchlines. Win a koozie next week. I love All it. All right. Um, let's get to the uh, lock horns. You've got a, a party going on. Leroy, lampshade on his head, dancing in the middle of the party. People looking on. Not a, not happy with what they're seeing. Loretta goes, Leroy was always the class clown. Now he's a clown with no class. That's okay. Yeah. This next one is Leroy sitting in his office. He's got a tips jar on his desk. His coworker says, didn't get the raise, Lockhorn? Mm-hmm. Uh, and now uh, we've got... Uh, I'm a tough judge. I'm a tough judge I on know. comics you're, today. You're tough today. Leroy I mean, is in the kitchen. He's got uh, a beer and he's scratching his ass. He's unshaven. Loretta says to her friend, sadly, there's no lifeguard at the gene pool. <laughs> that one's pretty good. That one went out strong. All right. So here is uh, number nine in the best Calvin and Hobbes of all time. I have not read it. So, and I apologize. I'm not great at this. Uh, d- there's very little of Calvin and Hobbes in this. I'm looking at it. There's like a guy. Is it is it Calvin's dad? I guess. All right. Anyway, there's a there's a balding guy, right? And he's in an office and he yawns at his computer. Then he walks over to another cubicle and he goes, I'm going to get some coffee, Ted. Want any? No, thanks, Frank. So he's like, tum, 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 tum. And he's walking to get his coffee. And then... A uh, blam, blam, whoosh, he bumps into a woman. Is that, I, they got Frank, run, says a woman to another guy. And then you see a frame where these deer have come in through the elevator of the office. You got him? He's a big one too. Nice job. The deer all have rifles and they've shot Frank. Uh, and they're like, nice job, Bam. I guess that's short for Bambi. Somebody got, uh, somebody get the camera. So now you see Calvin in a classroom reading a paper up at the, at the blackboard. And he goes, needless to say, Frank's family was upset when he didn't come home that night, but everybody understood that the human population had doubled in just two generations to almost 6 billion. So some thinning of the herds was necessary to prevent starvation. And then there's, I think these are his folks in the last frame at a kitchen table. And the mom is just read a note and goes, another parent teacher conference. And the father goes, your turn. Uh, that Calvin's incorrigible, I think, is the uh, <laughs> and very imaginative. And he very is imaginative. imaginative. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, a lot it, was going he, on there. And has a keen insight into, uh, you know, rationalizations and gun control. There's a lot. He tackles a lot in this strip. Yeah, it's the it's the other herd thinning our herd. They yep. have guns. It's yep. uh 
I like that it was a story that Calvin, a weird story that Calvin was making up. Yeah. All uh, right. So but, you're no uh, closer to being a fan of Calvin and Hobbes now, having read six or seven of the top eight. No, I'm not at all. But people are very angry we're doing these ones and not choosing better ones. Well, send them in. If you have better Calvin and Hobbes strips, and I'm, by the way, just for the record, I am a fan. I don't laugh out loud, but I think the characters are pretty well defined. I think it's charming, and uh, and I don't mind reading them. All right. A cat has jumped up here. Now, this cat I think I've talked about before. This cat has actively spilled um, water on my laptop, like literally with it pushed the water. When it wants to eat, it gets very – so right now it's asking me to feed it, and so we'll see if it – jumps up and nudges me i bet that happens although we're at the end of the podcast keep the water away from your uh i will i know i will mention there was no hobbs in this so this was a calvin yeah cartoon it's like when there's a blondie strip and there's no blondie it's dagwood at the diner talking to the cook who's actually even less interesting than dagwood is right it's called blondie so now here it is he's rushing out the door there's a honk out front and Blondie calls from downstairs. Your carpool is getting anxious, dear. He goes, I know, I know. Oh, my gosh, my briefcase. And she's running behind him, right behind you. He runs out the door. He gives her a quick kiss. I got to run. I can't be late again. Have a great day, dear. He runs outside. He goes, hold on. I almost forgot. And he walks back inside. She closes the door and said, what did you forget, dear? And he goes, something upstairs. And then he walks upstairs and he goes, the boss told me I could show up an hour late because I did such a good job yesterday on a big contract. He rips off all his clothes, screams yes, dives into bed. And she goes, you climb back into bed for only one hour, honey? He goes, I can't let them, I can't let the boss down. All right. Here's a scenario. Oh boy. You got an hour on your hands. You got a woman who's got... A 32 double D rack and calves that look like bowling pins. Yellow, soft, curly hair. You got an hour alone in the house with her and you're going to take a nap? You could show up to work red-faced, flushed, sweaty, trembling, smiling. Or you can show up with fucking donut crumbs and sadness. What what a, a life... In this strip, the life this guy could be living, and he's Why, taking a nap. Yeah. Why doesn't that deer, bunch of deer thin this oh, herd out? Your lips to whoever the guy who writes this comic strip's ears. Also, he's still screwing his carpool over, right? Yeah, they're honking. They're out front. That's totally a dangling part of the story. What an idiot. Oh, what a douche. <laughs> Oh, the worst. They should call this comic strip douche. <laughs> <laughs> right. Just uh, give up on the blondie thing. They're having her do nothing. Thank you to Midcoast Media. Always doing a fine job producing and editing the show. We want to also remind you, download the Game Time app, create an yeah. account, and use code PAPERS for $20 off your first purchase. Also, yeah. oh my God. If you're a new customer, go to mintmobile.com slash papers and uh, cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month. Use code papers. Okay. Love it. Uh, Mike, anything you want to uh, recommend? I don't know. I'm psyched to see Shane Gillis's uh, tires tonight. That's what I'm going to watch tonight. I'm trying to think if anything else is going on. Uh, probably. I'm just spacing out. Uh, okay. But I, yeah. will, I will tell people to watch uh, the new season of Hacks. It's very, very good. So wait, there's a new season? Yeah, season three is out now. Oh, wow. Yeah. I haven't seen any of them. Yeah. A All little right. of the first one, I guess. All righty, everyone. I think it's time to take it ish. Take it ish. All right. Sunday Paper Podcast with Greg and Mike. Reading Sunday papers is something I don't like. So I grab my telephone and cue up the show. I listen to my news on the radio. Sunday Paper Podcast with Greg and Mike. Sunday Paper Podcast is something that I like. 